Hi everyone. So here we are in chapter 10 in our nutrition for health and healthcare. And this first section, we're going to focus on um, pregnancy. Um, but before we pop into pregnancy, we want to um, note that our text and um, uh, experts are recommending that it's really important to focus for a woman of childbearing age on nutrition prior to pregnancy and enter pregnancy with full nutrition uh, stores. So you see listed here on the first slide that um, habits to establish are to achieve and maintain a healthy body weight. If a woman is overweight of um, childbearing age, any weight loss that she can um, accomplish is positive, but certainly we want to make sure that she's losing weight by choosing an adequate and balanced diet because if she enters pregnancy with malnutrition, um, it does impair the early development of uh, the fetus and malnutrition can also decrease uh, fertility. A mom should be physically active. She should receive regular medical care and avoid harmful influences like smoking, alcohol, and drug use, uh, exposure to x-ray. If mom has some pre-existing pre conditions like hypertension or diabetes, those should be in, um, um, in control. And uh, mom should be counseled on um, not taking excessive vitamin A supplementation looking at different herbals and supplements that she's taken, and then also uh, medications. If we go to the next slide, it focuses on pregnancy weight. Um, so if mom is underweight pre-pregnancy, so a BMI of under 18.5, there is a high risk of a low birth weight infant, and a low birth weight infant is defined as less than 5.5 pounds. This child is 40 times more likely to die within the first month. So there is a, a strong correlation with that underweight pre-pregnancy weight. Now, on the other hand, overweight and obese pre-pregnancy uh, BMI could uh, lead to difficult labor, uh, delivery, birth trauma, the need for a C-section. And then interestingly, an increased risk of neural tube defects and uh, that neural tube defect could possibly be due to lack of folate in the diet or poor um, glycemic control in a mom that has either prediabetes or undiagnosed diabetes or um, uncontrolled diabetes. Um, we also see most, more postpartum complications if mom is overweight or obese, like uh, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and infection. Now, uh, a low birth weight infant could, could be um, a mom that is underweight, overweight, or obese could deliver a low birth weight uh, baby. And some of the causes of that low birth weight could be, uh, you know, poor nutritional habits of the mom, hereditary, maybe their family just makes small babies, uh, disease, smoking, drug use, alcohol, lower socioeconomic status, inadequate health care lower education status, uh, closely spaced multiple births. So, um, you know, mom, mom's body hasn't had a time to build back those stores. Um, so if uh, mom is having a child very quickly after the last baby, that could set uh, that child up for low birth weight. Now, why are we concerned about low birth weight? Well, the long-term effects of a low birth weight child are having obesity and hypertension later in life, which I think that effect is fascinating. I mean, here they're a very small baby, and then later in life they're at risk for obesity and hypertension. And there's several um, theories as to how as to why that occurs. Um, lower adult IQ, um, educational disadvantage, and a shorter stature. So really a lot of um, possible outcomes, poor outcomes with a low uh, birth weight. Let's just look at infant mortality decline over time. I mean, this is just a complete positive of reflection of healthcare in the United States and how far we've come. So we see um, infant deaths per 1,000 live births, um, and we have uh, white and black babies represented, and you see how dramatically both numbers decreased uh, from 1915 to 2010.